I don't know if you all have ever watched that movie Groundhog Day. Where it's always the same day. Right? Till he gets it right. Till he gets it right, the day doesn't change. Similarly, for all of us, till we face our demons, till we come to terms with the lesson that we have to learn in this life, we will be born again and again and again in the same situation. 90% of people just go through life without ever stopping to think, why am I here? So if that question has ever popped into your mind, consider yourself blessed. You are part of a very small population that has reached a point where they're ready to discover why they are here. So if you look at life as, as a chance to discover your purpose, then every day, every moment is pure potential, right? It can happen like that just now in the next 10 minutes. You can find what you were looking for. It's like in Little Mermaid when the prince says, when the little mermaid looks at the prince and says, you're the one, you know. Just in one moment, you recognize that this is it for me. This is what I have to do. But what do we do? We spend our entire lives thinking about what's going to happen and feeling really bad about what already happened or in other words longing for what you know what what was which is kind of a distorted image of the present because when you bring the past when you think about the past you're actually bringing the pulling the past into the present so it's like taking uh, you know those double exposure photographs you know when you when we have a thing in india where once in six months you whitewash your house, right? So it's something like that. You whitewash your memories. You make them nicer than they ever were. You know, oh, life was beautiful when I lived in Mexico. It was peaceful and I had maids and we traveled and we ate lovely food. We went to seasides. Yeah, but your kids also gave you hell. You couldn't breathe and you fought with your husband and you had a, a surgery. Whatever, all those things you've forgotten, right? You've whitewashed them. You've whitewashed them. If you are continually thinking about the past, and continually worrying about the future, you're going to miss it. Whatever is happening, is happening now. This moment is filled with potential. Anything can happen. Life changes on a dime. That which you've been waiting for can begin right now. If you want something fresh, something new, something beautiful to take place in your life, then you have to be happy now. It is that happiness, that feeling of being comfortable, that feeling of being happy that, that attracts all good things to you. You sit and say, oh my God, I'm getting older and older. I'm never going to find anybody. Your life is so miserable for me. This is 
Seriously, with that mindset, you are not going to attract anything good. And you'll be so busy worrying about yourself that that handsome young man would have just walked by, but you're preoccupied in your own thoughts and you didn't see it. Being here in the moment is knowing exactly what is happening right now without any feelings, without any emotions. You have to remove those. Feelings and emotions are unnecessary baggage and we don't need it. So if you want something of your past, bring in those physical memories. A birthday party, a vacation, but not, oh, I was 14 once, so slim, so beautiful, my skin was unwrinkled. Right? We bring in the psychological aspects of our memories into the moment. And that makes us distracted from moving forward. Now, been working uh, for the last month with a group that's had a, it's a grief uh, group, grief counseling group. So they've had some a bereavement, you know, and, and losing a child is terrible. And they are unable to function because they feel that if they let that memory go, then they're leaving their child behind. So how do you get a new beginning? How do you get a new lease on life? Some of them don't even want any help. They want to remain in their misery, in their anger, in their denial, in their sadness. <clears throat> Many told me, I don't think I'll ever be happy again. In this world, so many people are born, so many people die, and especially in India, I feel, people have a very healthy attitude to death. They take it very philosophically, because, just because in the past, so many people lost their children. They would have seven and eight children because only three would survive. And they were okay with that. They knew that out of eight, three are going to survive. One will get cholera, one will get something else, one will get something else. So the attitude, a life just carried on and these children were just there. Now what has happened? People have one and two children. And they want, they built, honestly believe that the children belong to them. So they have got, it's got a property, proprietal value, uh, control over their child. So now when it's been taken away, they're like, how dare you? They're looking at life and saying, how dare you take away my child? The wise grieve neither for the dead nor the living. What has gone can never be brought back, whether it's a human being, whether it's a moment of happiness, whether it's a vacation, whether it's an unwrinkled skin. That's gone. And if you don't begin by saying, now what? Now where am I going? There is no point in living. You live your life thinking that everything is worthless, everything is horrible, everything is miserable. How will you bring the change that you are longing for? I wish something exciting would happen, right? To brighten up my day. 
I always want that. We want something exciting to happen. But that exciting thing happens and then that too goes into your past. Right? Till the next exciting thing. So you're continually waiting for these wonderful things to happen. And then they go away and then it makes you sad. And then again you long for it, then it comes and makes you happy. And then it goes away and then it makes you sad. Do you see the pattern here? You have to be happy, be centered, and not swing like a yo-yo. Be centered, whether it's good, whether it's bad. What is now is everything. So today, if I write that email to that particular person or a publisher or, you know, for my book, if I take the courage to write it now, maybe I'll have a new beginning. But if I spend my moment saying, what's the point of writing emails? What's going to be gotten by it? Anyway, nothing, nobody's going to read it. It's never happened to me in the past. I've sent 40 emails, 50 emails, never worked. What's the point of looking at that stupid dating website? I've looked at 50 men. They're all useless. They fake their age. They say they're 30 and when you meet them, they're 75. I'm not going to bother. If that is your attitude, then where is the excitement for the future? How are you going to bring it all in? It is always a new beginning. The water that flows in a river is flowing fresh all the time. I wonder where it all comes from, right? But it's not the same water that just went by five minutes ago. It's always new water coming. Always new water coming. Something new, something different is always happening. But we are holding on to this portion of a river and saying, okay, this is life, this is the life I want. And you're trying to hold it, but the river is flowing and you can't do it. Welcome new things, different things in your life. Make it all happen. The reason that we are not making use of this moment we're either living in the past or living in the future is because we lack awareness. Awareness is everything. Without awareness, this moment doesn't exist. And how does awareness come? It comes only with meditation. Only meditation gives you, it does something within you that changes things. I always say there are three things that you have to do. I keep saying it. Some will listen to me, most won't. But maybe I'll affect change. If I say it often enough and drill it into your head that it's the breathing, the meditation and the knowledge. Knowledge by itself. You can watch 50 videos. You can watch videos every night. It's not going to change your life one bit because it's cerebral you only understand it intellectually but are you applying it in your life you don't need to know the Vedas you don't need to know the scriptures by heart but if you understand the core values and every day you use those core values, you are a master. You are a master yourself. There is no need for any great PhDs. You know, now we lost a great uh, um, Tamil um, chief minister, 
died at the age of 94. He didn't even finish school. But people would come from all over Tamil Nadu just to listen to his speeches because the quality of his oratory was legendary. He could speak Tamil like it was poetry. No education is needed for that. Because when you connect, it all comes. The breathing allows you to, you must practice the breathing. The breathing is the biggest gift I can give. Meditation is fine, but we need to take it one step further. You can't remain static in your spiritual journey. You must to learn the pranayam because that is our greatest gift. The pranayam, besides having physical benefits, what it does is that it opens up the shushumna nadi, which is a, a it goes into your pineal gland. So what it allows you to do is to go much deeper into meditation. And when you go deep into meditation and you keep practicing the meditation, then all these, the knowledge that you learn, that you read, it enters your body at a cellular level, inside, somewhere where it, and it comes up, it comes up, that awareness is there. So you do, your meditation gives you meditative moments. What is a meditative moment? A moment that now, this is what I should do, right action. Right action in the moment is your meditative moment. And right action in the moment means new beginnings every minute. Every moment you're dying to the past, every moment you're wiping the slate clean. And it doesn't require too much effort. No one is asking, uh, requests you uh, to go and sit in the Himalayas to do any of that. Even 10 minutes of breathing and 15 to 20 minutes of meditation, 10 to 15 minutes of knowledge, give your mind one hour out of 24. Or even 45 minutes. You watch shows that are longer than that. All your reality, Kim Kardashian and your telenovelas and your soap operas. One hour, two hours, you sit like that. If you put the TV doing nothing. And here I'm telling you to do something that can change everything. And again, just hearing me, hearing what I'm saying is not enough. You have to bring in that discipline into your life and then see, then see how you do. You do the breathing, you do the meditation and you watch the, you read the knowledge or watch videos. Then the effect of that is even better. And like I said, this moment will never come back again. It's a new beginning. Be here now.